Hi everyone and welcome back to Brian's Business World. Today we're going to be talking about how to manage an employee that is currently performing poorly. And more specifically, we're going to talk about how you might want to handle a performance improvement plan, uh, or sometimes they're called a corrective plan or an action plan, with this specific employee. So let's just define things as we usually do to make sure we're all on the same page. So uh, the traditional name for these things is a performance improvement plan, uh, where the employee is either given a usually a written document uh, or email, or sometimes it's verbal, but a lot of times it's something in writing, along with a time span uh, in which, they're, uh, which they are allowed to address or correct certain performance deficiencies. Usually, under best practices, there'll be regular reports or check-ins regarding the performance concerns. Um, now, there are um, also, again, the Performance Improvement Plan, or AKA PIP, can also be an action plan, or referred to as an action plan, or a corrective plan uh, at different employers. Now, the question, uh, the really the sort of the nugget we're going to explore with this is not whether you should do a performance improvement plan or an action plan, but whether the performance improvement plan should be in writing or not, and if it is in writing, how detailed should it be? Now, legally speaking, and almost all the lawyers, which is extremely rare, will sing in one unified chorus on this point, that if you are uh, going to terminate someone, it is always best to have as much written documentation as possible regarding this per person's poor performance. Um, the law does not require, at least in any of the 50 states in the U.S. so far, that you document, uh, rather, that you have to have documentation to terminate someone, to fire someone. But um, many, many organizations do, and there's a lot of legal reasons why you would want to document things uh, from, a, you know, from a performance improvement standpoint. But should you always heavily document and write down a performance improvement plan? And my argument in today's episode is going to be not in all cases, not in all cases. If you provide the employee who is struggling with a very detailed written performance improvement plan, they're going to be very terrified of it, number one, and two, probably very disheartened to see all of the requirements they have and the listing in excruciating detail, page after page sometimes, of everything they're doing wrong. So you want to frighten the employee and demoralize them and make, create a presentative task that is almost impossible or they feel it's impossible from this just mountain of paperwork to accomplish anything. So legally, you might be protecting yourself, but managerially, you might be doing yourself a real disservice with the performance improvement plan. Uh, the other thing is that the employee will then feel it necessary to defend him or herself every five minutes with detailed counter letters, counter emails, uh, counter documentation on their side of the equation um, to sort of battle uh, the, you know, the detailed writings of the performance improvement. So you get this epic battle between the employee and the employer trying to paper everything up to see who's going to win. Uh, now, if you think, so here's the question of that, and that, uh, that sounds like a mess to you and not really actually improving the employee's performance, which I think everyone would agree that when you get into a battle of words, uh, it's not actually improving the performance, it's just creating a lot of paper on both sides. Um, that is not a success, that is a failure. So what can you do to avoid this battle of paper? Well, one, you may want to initiate a more informal performance improvement plan and sit down and talk through the issues with the person first and maybe have a series of meetings with the person talking through with them without bombarding them with a massive and detailed written performance improvement plan. Now, one important thing here for managers, entrepreneurs, and leaders, that you rather, rather, one incredibly important question, do you think this person can recover in terms of their performance? Do you think it's possible, perhaps even likely, maybe they've had just a, a slight falling off? The answer to that, yes, 
you do not want to bombard them with a massive, detailed, uh, almost legalistic performance improvement plan. You will want to talk with them, maybe have a series of meetings with them, clearly uh, addressing these concerns and working on them. But I think you really want to be careful about how quickly you pull the trigger on a super detailed performance improvement plan. Uh, again, it can have very unintended effects. And in the end, if both sides are vigorously papering over everything they're doing, you may not be left with any sort of good paper trail at all. It might be all ultimately pointless. So the takeaway for today's episode is that if you think there is even a modest possibility the employee can pull out uh, or resolve or fix their performance issues, I would hold, consider holding off on providing a detailed written improvement, performance improvement plan. If things continue going south, the employee isn't uh, improving, you can always implement a more uh, detailed and legalistic performance improvement plan later. But my initial encouragement to you would be to look at more informal performance improvement plans or action plans uh, that you would very actively and frequently work with the employee on. I hope you've enjoyed our segment today and um, please uh, leave us your comments, follow us. We'd love to hear from you and um, we'll be speaking with you soon. Thank you.